It is a tradition at ASB for the senior class to choose a peer to represent them at graduation. Mahika, please come forward to introduce our student speaker. Good afternoon. Our parents tell us that education is the best investment they make in our future, and then it becomes a lesson in economics. The rate of return is as highest, and its value never depreciates. All this is said so that we put our best foot forward. However, if our parents were really smart, what they would say to us is, at school, you're going to make some friendships that will be invaluable and last a lifetime, because our friends are the greatest motivation that help us to perform to the best of our ability. Kanika Vesh, described by many, including myself, as a best friend. We both moved to ASB at the beginning of seventh grade. We were the new American Desi girls, and for reasons best known to others, people always seem to confuse the two of us. Our names both end in Ica. We have similar built and long black hair. I will always remember our defining moment. I was sitting next to her in choir class. I put my head on her shoulder and said, and I quote, best friend. <laughs> Thinking back, that must have been very creepy, but not to Kanika. Kanaka being Kanaka accepted me as a best friend with open arms. Kanaka has always been kind and compassionate, and she has a heart of gold. She's always optimistic. For example, a recent story, together we were on our way to prom, running late. When we left the Pedderode area, and about 10 minutes into our drive, we had Chalpathi staring into our faces. We were being taken to the Taj in South Bombay, not in Bandra. My response was a panic attack. Kanika, on the other hand, was calm and collected with a positive attitude. She believed that we would be there in good time. Today I have the pleasure of introducing Kanika as the student speaker. This is an honor, not just because she's my friend, but because I know she has all the characteristics that a student speaker should have. To start with, she's achieved academic success and has been truly involved with student activities. She's a two-time ASB award recipient, which is the highest honor a student can receive at ASB. One of her best qualities is how she enhances the lives of others, not just through her community services, but also among her family and friends. She has the ability to carry great responsibility on her shoulders and has always been a leader. Best of all is how she tells stories. They are motivational and memorable, and this is exactly the kind of speech we need to hear today as we embark into the real world. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Kanika Vesh. On the evening of December 11th of last year, I sat on my balcony feeling a mixture of things. I was anxious, I was doubtful, I was a little excited, I had a few shreds of hope. I began to reevaluate every major choice I had made in my life because I wanted to know if I was worthy enough to be accepted into my first choice for university whose results were coming out the next morning. I didn't know what to do with all my feelings, so I did what I usually do when I have a lot to think about. I fell asleep. I didn't stay up until 3.30 a.m. when our region would be receiving our decisions. No, I slept all of those worries away. I awoke, though, at 5 in the morning and couldn't fall back asleep. Rather than checking my college account, however, I decided to check my phone. I found three new messages and two missed calls, all from Ari. She had stayed awake to find out whether I had gotten into college long after even I had fallen asleep. Drowsily, I texted her back, telling her I hadn't checked yet, and she replied with, oh, well, now you're awake. It seemed that she knew exactly how I felt the night before, even though I hadn't talked to her about it. I didn't have to say a word. Maybe it's because we've been together for quite a while now, but at times, we all really know each other better than we know ourselves. This is the essence of the class of 2013. You will never find another group of students like us. Why? Ask any of our teachers, perhaps Ms. Newcomb or Mr. Roy in particular, as they know many of us very well. They'll vouch for me when I say that we tend to hold off on our own assignments, even if they're due in maybe just a couple of hours, to edit someone else's extended essay or to proofread someone else's college application or to just sit with someone and talk about something they're dealing with. IB diploma? While this isn't exactly the model other grades should follow, we didn't let the heavy workload of the IB get in the way of our friendships for a second. If I could pick three words to describe our class, the first word would be loyal. My personal anecdote shows how we will drop whatever we have in our hands to help out one another. 
While this may not ultimately be the most beneficial to our own futures, we know that the person we're helping would do the same if the situations were reversed. On the overnight magic bus trip in 11th grade, one of the tasks was to climb the Jacobs Ladder. For any of you who were present at the senior recognition ceremony, you may recall that climbing that ladder is not one of my favorite pastimes. Here I was, faced with it again, less than six months later. Did I feel any more prepared to take on this huge dangling assortment of wood and rope? Not at all. Unjun, who was assigned to be one of my partners, saw the fear in my eyes. But you've done this before, Kanika. It won't be so bad, he said reassuringly. It was still bad. But it could have been much worse had it not been for Unjun, uh, for Unjun offering himself up every time I got stuck. He could have finished the ladder in three minutes if he wanted to, but he stayed with me on each step. Step on my knee and I'll, and I'll push you up, he said. After I refused to do so about five times, he became a little more persuasive. Just do it already, he said. <laughs> so I did. And, and then I did again. And then one more time before we decided to call it a day. When we were back down on the ground, he had massive bruises all up alongside his legs from my stumbling and falling. And I think at one point I might have accidentally kicked him in the face. I'm sorry about that, Anjun. But thank you. You took on a leadership role during each and every activity and made sure your entire team had reached safety until you worked the course yourself, and that's very admirable. The second word, or rather phrase, I would use to describe our grade would be a little too at ease. Although this definitely doesn't apply to everyone, June, for example, will not settle for anything less than a 95%, and Shakya has us all questioning our lives when she conquers and destroys the award ceremony. There is, however, a significant portion of the grade which has the tendency to push deadlines or study until the very last second we have until, the, until we have to walk into the testing room, myself included. Sure, you could call this procrastination, but think for a second. What does this really say about our grade? We trust ourselves. We're risk takers. <laughs> we perform wonderfully under pressure. We are adrenaline junkies high off the rush of stress. We don't fear challenge, we embrace it. Sure, the night before the extended essay was due, we, we wouldn't have minded a little extension, but that's only because we didn't want to give anything in that was short of our best work. The third word, however, would be sincere. In all seriousness, we are a genuine class set on the future. Our minds are fueled with passion and ambition, passion and, ambition and though we are sometimes short-sighted in our pursuits, we remain driven and aim extremely high. When we love an activity, we put our whole heart into it. Mihika, for example, has devoted her life into organizing events for Sadna Village, Save the Children, and Senior Trips, and she still has time to win prom queen. <laughs> Kerpa choreographed and coordinated the entire Indian Festival of Nations dance, although no one in the audience was really paying attention to anyone else but her on the day of the show. She is our Beyonce. Pooja, in the words of Miss Newcomb, is the little engine that could. She powers through whatever obstacle comes her way and she does it with grace. She also has an extensive library of notes on every single subject you could imagine, which she could actually probably sell to eager students for a fair amount of money. Adia dazzles us with her use of color. I knew she'd be an artist ever since the ninth grade, when our science teacher, Mr. Martelli, compared my graph to hers and called mine a linear mess while Adia's was a marvel. She clearly has a way with depiction and her paintings are full of vibrant energy and truth. Zeba has a lot to say in her essays and she doesn't let the small text space get in her way. She crams every single detail about that concept into the little box and usually gets full credit for doing so. Or that could be because her teachers get headaches after squinting at her minuscule handwriting and decide to award her full credit right then and there. Anish was unfortunately faced with numerous leg injuries, which would have discouraged any other player from pursuing the game, but not him. He went back into the court with a vengeance and traveled with the Saisa boys basketball team this year when they won the championship. When we want something, we don't let anything or anyone else get in our way. Recently, I was described as being a pot of collective emotions. I think that fits nicely with my perception of this school. It's a pot of fiery, talented, ambitious students. There will never be a dull moment here. 
whether it's walking on the third floor and hearing musicians play in the practice rooms or uh, participating in Spirit Week activities organized by Wonder Woman, Tara, or running off to attend an extracurricular meeting on time, or scouring the school to to find locations for Flash Theater. I don't think anyone can forget Masha's chilling performance in Sneha's play, Nameless, which took place in our very own basement. She had to play a teenage prostitute roaming the streets of Mumbai, getting played by the other seemingly good-natured characters. It was heartbreaking. The entire crowd was silent the entire time. And I remember Unchel and I had to emotionally distance ourselves from her performance so that we could remember that it wasn't real. Besides Flash, there are tons of other things we're definitely going to miss. Jammies, for instance, when we'd all gather in the MPH and hear our talented student body showcase their music. The honored Connor became a favorite. And when a group of girls went on to dance to a medley of K-pop songs, I think I fell in love with Grace. The way she moves, well, it's hard not to fall in love with her. Even outside of school, we're just bursting with talent. Or maybe that's just Shan Singh. But that's good enough to represent the rest of us. How cool was it when we walked into the concert grounds to see world-famous group Swedish House Mafia and heard our very own classmate, Sean, opening for them? So what now? Good luck to all of you, and I hope we'll meet again over summer holidays. Is, is this goodbye? Hardly. It won't be easy for us to last one week without each other. Just ask Harshal, who can't go on living without sending a Snapchat to everyone every five minutes. What are we going to do without those, without seeing your beautiful face 40 times a day? What are we going to do without Kay's homemade cookies? We'll have to settle for cafeteria food. Or worse, we'll have to cook food ourselves. And, and what about Prasad's fun facts? I don't know about you guys, but I need to know when a new species of offspring-eating lizards has been discovered. <laughs> and who's going to tell us what we need to hear when we need to hear it? During cricket once in PE class, Josh told me that I wasn't a very good cricket player, and that I was actually helping the other team more than I was helping myself. (laughs) Thank you, Josh. Who's going to be this blunt to me in college? Who's going to remind us to live in the moment, to seize the day, to treasure each minute of high school, just like Vic does? Carpe diem, do you remember when you gave me that advice, Vic? Or when we're panicking and we need someone to calm us down? Do you guys remember uh, when we almost all missed our senior prom because we were about to pass the 8.30 deadline? Oh, and Mr. President kept us calm. He knew we'd be able to walk in there somehow, even if it was 10 minutes later than we were allowed. Who's going to keep things lighthearted and tell us to take it easy, to invite us to his rooftop when Adam is no longer there? You know, I say all of this, but I still have the feeling that we're all going to be okay in terms of taking it easy. I don't think we've ever actually had that problem before. But we will have to try that out with a new group of people, with new friends, with new teachers. Ratan, I know group projects with us aren't your favorite, but thank you for putting up with us. I know you'll miss our group dynamics when you're in college next year. And how will Hannah deal when the people in college aren't as welcoming or as accepting as we are? When people here are new, we we accept them, and maybe a little too quickly. (laughs) Hannah remembers us inviting her for a movie on her very first day. I can't believe I made friends already. Well, at least you know that they'll speak English there, Hannah since you were a little unsure about how you would manage here before you moved. Then there's Shimona and Brian. When Brian first moved here, I distinctly remember his love for Jesse McCartney and Drake Bell. I think his email was drakebelllover95 or something like that. And when Shimona first moved here, she tried to convince all of us that My Chemical Romance was the best band of all time. She also outsmarted Herschel once when, she t- when, when he told her to shut up, And she replied with, I don't shut up, I grow up. And when I see your face, I throw up. (laughs) No one knows or understands where Shimona comes up with these things. There's, There's certainly no replacement for her in college. But there really won't be a replacement for anyone, in fact. Thinking about how customized our grade feels, I wonder how we'll act around other people in college. I know for one that Arvind, One of the sweetest guys in our grade will make a dozen friends as soon as he sets foot on campus without even realizing, similar to how he did during Thymen. Do boys go to fraternities or sororities, he once asked me. (laughs) Arvind, please stay that naive and pure forever. (laughs) Aditi will still find a way to relate every biology concept to an episode of Grey's Anatomy. Anushka, our reigning black belt and karate star, will still be a feisty little firecracker and will deceive many with her small size. 
Ollie will go to film school and become even more artsy than he is now. Munder will continue to alter his facial hair on the daily. <laughs> Simran will definitely be an invaluable member of her business class, just as long as she stays away from playing criminal case or Tetris. Saba, who asks a thousand questions every day, will continue to be just as curious, if not more so. Dylan, who, to be honest, I used to feel a little sorry for back in middle school because he was about this tall and his voice was really high, now towers above us. And I'm sure he'll probably grow to be even taller in college while I'm stuck at five inches, uh, five, five, five feet two inches. <laughs> That's karma, I guess. Shefali will have the time of her life taking as many courses as she wants to, having expressed interest in engineering, economics, philosophy, psychology, and neuroscience. No problem, Shefali. If anyone can try to take all of that on, it's you. Bavia is going to change the world. We all know it. Who else has that much passion, drive, and dedication to causes she believes in, particularly in saving wildlife? And her loud, bubbly, bubbly voice is hardly one for a follower. She is a leader. Just remember, though, that animals aren't capitalized, Bavia. And if you do ever accidentally capitalize the S in sharks 90 times in a research paper, there's always the find and replace tool. <laughs> the name of this speech is interphase. I'll explain why. Interphase is the longest phase of a single cell's life. It is when most of the cell's development and growth takes place. Not unlike high school, but more particularly not unlike ASB. No matter what grade we all entered this school, we are exiting as different people. High school is our interphase, the turning point between maturing out of middle school and sensing the shocking reality and competitive pressures of college, or the real world. High school is that almost utopian period of blind trust, sticking up for your friends to anyone, sometimes even to their own parents. High school is endless phone calls, constant text messages, late night movies, going to CPK on Fridays after school. We had a student in our grade named Amenye Sachinga. He passed away before many people here even had the chance to get to know him, but we always remember him with a smile on his face. Whether he was climbing, uh, whether he was rock climbing on Week Without Walls, or once he actually chugged an entire soda and let out a gigantic burp, or laughing loudly at something someone else said, he was always grinning that cheeky, amenye grin. Uh, and, and when we go off, whenever we're faced with something, we have to remember to smile like he did, guys, because life is short and we can't be let down by little things. We have to make the most of it. So here we are. I couldn't be happier to graduate with this group of fools. We did it, guys. I wish everyone the best in their college years, and thank you to everyone who has helped us along the way.